racing, uh, thoroughbreds and harness racing here on the same day. Uh, some somewhere on the road this year. Uh, our new president, uh, Mr. George Zoffinger, certainly has a lot on his plate and a lot of challenges ahead of him. Yeah, it's going to be a very challenging year. As you indicated, Ken, uh, obviously there's no progress on the OTB and foam betting front in New Jersey, and that's really uh, paralyzing the whole industry at the moment. One of the things that's really tying it up is uh, some of the controversy over the dates. The thoroughbred horsemen have gone to court trying to force uh, the sports authority tracks to Meadowlands and Monmouth to race 141 days when they really only want to go for 120. And depending on how the courts come down on that, that could really alter the calendar later on in the year. There's no purse supplement this year. The industry got $18 million from the state last year. They're going to get nothing this year. So that's going to make uh, purse money, especially at Monmouth, a little tighter. So uh, Mr. Zoffinger joins uh, the sports authority at a very, very challenging point. All right. Well, uh it has been a, a challenging week if you're driving against John Campbell. He has kind of reasserted himself uh, this past week. He had a really big week, and I think he, uh, quite frankly, deserves the uh, day off today. Well, he can certainly afford to take the vacation break. Uh, Campbell won't be here. We're going to take a look at our uh, leading drivers, our uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, dozens here. Campbell, of course, leading the pack, as always, uh, out in front. Uh, Luke Olette in the runner-up spot. Of course, Luke has been uh, Mr. Sunday, and he certainly has an opportunity today with Campbell away. And Dave Miller, we're going to see him in action later on in the Father Foley series. Of course, uh, Miller, uh, well-known for driving magician. He'll be out today with star Acadian. Yeah, John Campbell with uh, three in a row on Thursday. He brought in some pretty good prices. Special delivery, Seaman at 7-1. to one. Three on Friday, including twice a Raider at 17-1. to one. And then that four-bagger last night, all systems go NZ at 11-1. to one. And uh, capping it off in the finale with Franco in Force N. Uh, Luke Willette, Artistic Vision, the favorite in the uh, Jersey Girls, 2-5, to five, uh, a winner again. And Dakota Express, this is the real hot horse right now. Dakota Express, five in a row, the four-leaf clover champion. Great story of Dakota Express coming down from Prince Edward Island, the place we don't see many horses arrive at the Meadowlands, having a great success here for Jackie McLeod. And Mike Lachance with a triple on Friday night, trying to keep pace there with John Campbell leading the way at night with a night he wins. That's the first half of the Dunkin' Donuts dozen. Let's look at the uh, trainer standings, and uh, Brett Pelling continues to uh, lead the way there. Although it was a fairly slow week, I uh, just had uh, one winner in the past week, uh, that coming the last race on last night. Uh, Ross Krogan, the uh, hat trick, three on Thursday. He has five in today, although four of the five are long shot uh, outsiders. And of course, uh, Marino and uh, Fusco have been suspended. Uh, they both got the 60-day suspensions. All of those horses, including the Peter Pan horses, have been dispersed. Uh, Brian McGee has been a recipient of many of those uh, horses coming into his barn. And uh, Brett Pelling looking to add to his totals today. He's got Will Sykes. We'll talk about him uh, in just a few moments in the uh, Father Foley series today. You mentioned Ross Krogan with the uh, five horses entered today. And uh, Mark Ford has three in. He's got Columbus Hanover and Star Acadian racing in both divisions of the Father Foley. That's the Dunkin' Donuts dozen. Well, almost three weeks ago, the Red Hot H.P. Pock. He uh, crushed the competition first over in a stakes record in the... Uh, uh, stakes uh, Father Foley Series final, and he's back here after a rest. The pack is back. We'll talk about that. And next. welcome back, and good afternoon once again. I think uh, Sam McKee mentioned uh, the award you got last. Well, tell us about that award you uh, received down in Florida. It was uh, from the Harness Horsemen's International, the uh, Clyde Hurt the Memorial Award uh, for a media reporter each year. I was deeply honored to be uh, part of the convention and the ceremony down at uh, Fort Lauderdale. All right, we bring quality to the table right here, Mike Farrell. Uh, from the Bergen Record, an award-winning journalist. Uh, right now, we'll look at HP Pack. The pack is back, as I mentioned. Purchased in a private sale in Florida last June, Smetshammer said he could tell he was a pretty good horse right off the bat, and he thinks he will eventually race against the best. A, a classic late bloomer. Well, it appears so, and uh, Tron has done a great job bringing him along. This is a five-year-old now having his breakout season. Uh, somewhat late in his career, but you know, better late than ever. A winner of six of seven this season, virtually unbeatable. Super first over, 154 and three in the Father Foley final. Owns plenty of speed, but is better from off the pace and explodes off cover. Tabor Lobel, that's the sire. He's a son of Speedy Crown. Smets Hammer, his best trotter uh, prior to this, of course, was Bowling for Dollars. He also had Mr. Commissioner, a Hamiltonian eligible last year. Uh, in race six, the two to one morning line choice is Will Sykes. Will he uh, Sykes them out today, Mike? 
Well, perhaps uh, Lasix really helped him kick up his game a notch uh, last time out. Uh, also having a perfect trip that week didn't hurt either. He really looked great, but there might be a different scenario today, and we're going to take a look at that race later on this afternoon. He won five of his first nine starts at the Big M, scored first time Lasix in round one. Tough post, but lands in a soft division today, and he does own that tactical speed, and we get Jack Moiseev in the sulky today. So we've got a Florida bred and an Indiana bred, and they are in the highlighting the uh, divisions of the Father Foley Memorial as they try to qualify for the big money final next week. We'll take a timeout and come back with Mike Farrell's daily double selection. It's the Meadowlands Racetrack, home of the world's greatest harness action. Conica close-up time as we uh, take a look at the early daily double and get Mike Farrell's impressions here. Just had a racing fan come up to me and say, Okay, uh, last night you said perfect Pierce piloting, and uh, Sam McKee said popular Pelling Pacer. You know it takes a lot of talent to string that together. It takes a monster <laughs> talent, monster talent well, uh, to do the verbal gymnastics. Show us your handicapping talent here. Uh, we've got uh, claiming trotters in the first race, and uh, Luke Willett had a brief lead there earlier this week, and uh, John Campbell said, oh, hang on here. And now Luke Willett's saying, what happened? I was on top, but now he's looking to uh, take advantage of uh, Campbell's absence with a, a horse that appears to be in a softer spot here and is four to five. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty strong here. In fact, it looks like a fairly chalky double to kick off our day here, although we have been wrong before. Uh, Bite Me is the horse we're talking about. That's uh, the horse in the two hole here. Uh, had the 10 hole last time, so moves way inside here. Uh, again, you look at the record, 0 for 9 over the last two seasons, only a pair of seconds there. But uh, the horse in what looks like a uh, fairly soft field uh, was competitive last time from a bad post. Better post, Luke uh, sticks with the horse. Always good omens, especially on Sunday. Of course, we've talked about it before. Luke has been Mr. Sunday Afternoon. Yeah, he picked him over the eight handsome, who does show speed, but is suspect in the stamina department, so might provide some speed uh, for a two bite me to vault off of in the first race. In the second race, the five Zara. This one's showing some alert pace after shipping back from Freehold. And also takes a class drop here. That could be the, uh, the winning edge here. David Miller uh, sticks with this one uh, on the drop here. Uh, post position from the five hole should not be a major problem. Uh, competition will come from Beach Talk, who looks to be a closer. And there's also a little sentiment that perhaps uh, Millie and Mary might show a little more, but drawing the nine hole obviously will make that a little tougher assignment. All right, uh, Zara was a uh, Miller's choice over the nine, Millie and Mary, a good acclimating mile from that one. But uh, Mike Farrell sticks with the five, Zara, and so does Dave Miller. Let's recap the Conica cl close up daily double picks here for Mike Farrell in the first race. It's the two bite me in the second, the five, Zara, the old two five there. Back upstairs to the birthday boy, Sam McKee, looking great at uh, 45. 